So to make this arched arbor, I did use some plans. I loosely followed some plans by Better Homes and Gardens, and I'll, I'll include a link to that in the description box. So make sure you look for that and stick around to the end because I have some special guests for you. The first thing that I did after purchasing all the lumber was cut out my template for the arches, and I just used the old-fashioned string pencil and nail method. Okay, so this is the template that I made out of one by four underlayment, and I did do the whole piece, but we're only gonna cut out half of it on the one by 12 at a time. So this is the one by 12, and um, I've already, it was eight foot long, and you can get a whole half circle out of one one by 12. And you just line up this corner and this other corner down here and your edge will be right up against the top. This is actually a 60 inch. This is a 60 inches from here to the other side. So this is a little bit wider than normal. I think normally they're like 48, but I wanted mine to be wider because I'm gonna do a double gate. That's how you do that. And then once you get the two by 12 cut, you join it here and then you put a one by, you know, faux little thing in front to cover the screws. And I just used my jigsaw, my Ryobi jigsaw to cut this out. It's slow going. I would definitely suggest getting a nice new blade for this process because it, it is very slow going and you want it to be as accurate as possible. Um, and I can tell you that it definitely requires a good bit of sanding after it's all cut out. I used my rotary sander and really gave it a really good sanding after I got all my pieces cut out just to kind of round off the edges and, and straighten it out a bit. So today I set the posts. Yesterday I cut the arches. Here's one of them, 60 inches wide. And then the other one is sitting up on the patio there. So those will sit on top of here. So I set the post today. What I did is I dug both of the holes on either side of the step and then I set the back corner post first. I let that, I used quickcrete so it set up in about 30 minutes and then I did everything off there obviously. I leveled it, plumbed it, and then lined up everything else off of that. And I put them about two feet into the ground and then sunk them in quickcrete or satcrete quick setting, satcrete quick setting concrete. And now that they're set I will go ahead and cut my 4x4 four four to set on top of there and then set the arches and then possibly start on the lattice work. I didn't think we were going to be able to get them level. It was when I first started digging and setting the posts, I thought, oh my gosh, there's no way we're going to get these all four level and plumb. Somehow took my time, did it. So then the next thing I did was cut my 4x4s four to go between the two posts on each side. That way you have something to secure your arches into. After I secured the arches into the 4x4s, which the 4x4s were screwed in with 5 inch lag bolts, and then I put the arches into the 4x4s with three screws, three 3 inch screws. And then after that, I put the lattice work all the way up the sides and over the top. I'm going to show you real quick how I created the doors and how I made that top rail and figured out how this would do a circle because the whole idea was for it to be looking like a full circle on the top. I didn't want it to look like an egg or an oval. Uh, I wanted the doors to be a nice exact half circle to this half circle. So what I did is I used my same patterns that I used to make the top part. I brought these out here because these are the, let's see, so this is the right side and this is the left side on the bottom. Okay, but originally, you know, I used these initially for the top. Now, these are cut off because I cut them in order to make the gate top, but when I used them for the top there, they continued around, obviously. Does that make sense? So I'll show you how I did it. Remember, these were longer. So I brought these out here. I fastened them. So this is this, is this exact pattern right here. This is this piece, but this originally was longer. So it was something like this. 
you know, imagine that was a half circle when I originally had these before I cut them down. So I brought them out here and I nailed them up on each side. So I just put one nail here and then I had the other half as well. And I put one nail here so that I could just see how high I wanted this piece here. If, depending upon where I put it, if it related to that circle and made a complete circle out of this shape. So I put one nail on each side and held up this whole piece and let it meet in the center and adjusted them on that one nail, which is like a fulcrum and adjusted them so that they met in the center and there was a little bit of space in the center between the two pieces. And then I came back behind with a pencil and I drew a pencil line from here down to here on the back side and then I cut that off and that's basically what gave me this piece right here. So I drew the pencil line here and then obviously I cut this rail and put it on top of this and then cut that, you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, that's how I figured out how to make this piece on both sides and made sure that I had the correct angle, the height that I wanted, because I wanted it to be 48 inches from the ground to here. Um, so that's how I did it. I built the doors outside underneath my carport in my driveway and I used some two by six lumber that I had gotten for free. So I had to rip all the two by sixes down to two by fours um, in order to use them for the rails and the styles. And then of course used my patterns for the top to, um, to create the doors. I made my doors the finished size exactly one inch smaller than the opening between the four by fours so that I had a half inch on either side for my hinges and a little bit of space for them to swing freely um, so they wouldn't hit in the center. So there's a little bit of space in the center as well. And then I used my Craig jig to pocket hole the lumber um, to, to fasten my rails and styles together. And it worked fantastic. They're super strong um, joints. And I used my um, jigsaw to cut the shape of the top, of course. And um, so, you know, make sure that you have a sander so that you can sand that to make it look really nice and perfect. And I sanded my doors down really well. And uh, it worked out somehow. So I used those little wooden dowel things to fill in the pocket holes um, and cover those. And it, it worked really nicely. Here's where we're at today. Just finished building this eight foot box on the right. I've got to cap it off and then level it. So I'm gonna to have to build up the ground a bit there in order to make it the same level as the one on the left because it just needs to be the same. Everything is level. All my lattice work is all level with the side pieces of lattice. I made the these side pieces of lattice the same as these so that those would be level around there and of course across. So that box has got to come up to that, the same as that. And then right now I am figuring this top part out. I've still got to do one more piece of lattice across here and then possibly a little shorty there, I don't know, but I've got to cut these off and I'm going to show you how I'm doing that with my template. And real quick, the reason why I'm letting my uh, one buys go up above the top rail is because of our goats. Um, the whole reason for this project is to keep the goats off the patio so my mother-in-law can have all her nice plants again. So if this is solid, even though it's 48 inches high, the goats can still jump up on there because it's solid. They'll just jump up right up on that and right over. But if there's these little guys poking up over the top of this solid rail, they won't jump up on there because they're unsure of these pieces sticking up. I put all these up there just to see if I liked this design with the one by twos because I was trying to decide if I wanted to do one by twos or if I wanted to use the 
three inch fence pickets or really exactly what I wanted to put up there. So I, that's why I put basically one staple in each of these boards to see if I liked the design. These boards are really crooked. This one has got like a, it's got a real bad bend in it right there and a couple of them are really bent. So I've got to go back to Home Depot. I decided I do like the design because I like that these are small and they relate to these. And um, so I've got to go back to Home Depot and hand pick out some decent one by twos. And the reason why I did this design is because I wanted that to also the these things to relate to the siding on the house, this bit here. So that's why I put this detail on the boxes um, so that that would all kind of relate as well as relate to the side slats on the arbor. So that's the reason for my design. So um, like I said, I'm leaving these pickets above the rail and this is my pattern for this piece, the rail piece. Um, so if you're thinking of doing something like this, definitely make yourself a pattern. I used these um, for this obviously for that, so it was very good to have an actual pattern. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I just raised my pattern up above there a bit, making sure that this is the same distance all the way, and then marked off my pickets, and now I'll cut that along there so that I have that same curve on my pickets as I do here. And I still get that whole circle feeling from this Whole thing. Okay, so that's the gist of this project. Um, I do have the link for the Better Homes and Gardens plans for this project. It does have a materials list and a drawing and of course directions for this. It's a great place to start. That's where I got plans that I loosely followed to make this. Um, it's particularly helpful in telling you how to do the arch. So um, check out that link. I still have a couple things left to do out here. I've got to still build my lattice work to go up here. I'm gonna put some sort of a post in the ground and then put lattice from here up, probably in some arched fashion to mirror that, I'm not sure. But that's it, if you have any questions about this project, please leave your questions in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, you guys, see you next time.